Hello and welcome to Mr. Valentin's YouTube video review for the Lord of the Flies text. Today, things that we're going to go over is allegorical interpretations. We're going to go over some important characters of the story, some general information about things that occurred within the story, and then just a very quick analysis of what occurred in the exposition, inciting incident, complication, climax, denouement, and resolution. Uh, things that will help you, of course, is your notebook, uh, your study guide, the V-notes will be especially helpful, uh, and the rest of the information should be clear. So be ready to take some notes, jot down any information you have any questions about, and hopefully they'll be answered. So first up, the most important literary term you get out of Lord of the Flies is the fact that the story is an allegory. An allegory uh, becomes a story that represents various different things throughout time and society. All right, so important is an allegory is a device in which characters. or events in a story represent or keyword symbolize ideas and other concepts. That's the most important literary term you learn from this. All right, so our allegory was this lofty and somewhat strange kind of allegory. So the first thing was the island. And what did the island first represent? It represented the Cold War. And we talked about tension, they're constantly talking about the Reds and communism and that kind of stuff. All right. The beastie goes on to represent irrational fear pink on the island which is in the first half of the novel represents innocence while in the second half of the novel the color red becomes more prominent and this becomes a symbol of violence danger The conch, all right, is one of the first more symbolic representation of items. It represents order, which makes sense because once we have the broken conch, it represents chaos. Piggy's glasses goes on to represent uh, intelligence, and Piggy in general kind of represents intelligence. So when his glasses break, it's the opposite of intelligence and civilization. It becomes savagery. The last thing all right, is the kids on the island generally represent uh, society and eventually how society falls apart. The other literary term that becomes important for the story, and certainly for this story, is the sublime. Now, the sublime is this lofty, complicated literary term that's studied in very high-level English, but we've taken a very simple approach to the sublime. So, for our purposes for today, um, we're describing the sublime as something that is impressive in power and awesomeness. So that's definition part one. The second part is that the sublime all right, results in fear. All right, so you definitely need to know this. Uh, 
the example I gave in class was standing at, on top of the Eiffel Tower. All right, I'm up top of the Eiffel Tower, I'm looking out, and it's impressive. It's impressive in power, in the awesomeness, in the scale, in the sight. All right, everything is amazing. And then all of a sudden I realize how insignificant I am and how small I am and how tall this is and how I could fall and it would be terrible and awful and frightening. All right, it results in fear. For Ralph, he's often looking at the ocean. Uh, in chapter 6, the text indicated that Ralph shuddered and he saw the landsman's view swell and it seemed like the breathing of some stupendous creature. Uh, and everything looks terrifying. He sees the ocean swell up, and it's just so impressive in power, and then he realizes how in, um, insignificant he actually is. So that's the sublime. The next thing is a couple of important characters throughout our story. I think I have them all generally here, all right? Uh, the ones that you should definitely know um, but I'm sure there's other characters, but I wanted to hit these important ones. Uh, and I'm not going to go in particular order. I listed an alphabetical for you to make a nice list for yourself. You know, I like to alphabetize things on the test so it's easy and clear for you to find. Um, but outside of the realm of that, I wanted this to be easy and accessible. So I may be all over the place. Um, so don't mind me as I go through my thoughts. All right, Ralph, we know he's the main character of our story. When you think of Ralph, you think of someone who's heroic, um, he's very good looking, those kind of details. He's the only boy who acknowledges that Simon's actually murdered. So he's this developed, intelligent, uh, and one of the only characters who actually grows. The only other character who I think we really see develop in any way is Piggy. Piggy, of course, is the boy with asthma. He's fat. He's described as kind of a little on the lazy side. Um, he can't participate in what the other boys are doing. Uh, Piggy's often left out, made fun of. Uh, eventually, he's killed. As we know from the story, Piggy, um, his glasses represent intelligence. He's constantly at odds with Jack, although Jack is not the person who kills him. That's Roger. So keep that in mind, that it's not his turmoil ends up with, with Roger. Um, and his death is kind of horrific. While he gets hit with a rock, he actually falls down and lands on another rock, which causes his head to split open. It's horrific and terrible and awful and all those other synonyms for bad things. Um, so keep that in mind. So, that's Piggy, all right, uh, the kind of boy who uh, talks about his auntie, he loves candy, um, his glasses break, you know, all those details. Good. Uh, the other major important character would be Jack. He's more of our uh, antagonist, the opposite of Ralph, all right, he's the person who becomes the new chief. Remember, Jack probably would have been the best leader in the first place. He probably should have been voted it. Uh, but he's described as weird-looking, he's awkward, uh, a little strange. He's certainly mean. He's not a pleasant child. He's not like, oh, Jack, that's a guy I really like to hang out with. All right, he bullies people, he's impolite, he's improper. Uh, his main uh, goal is to hunt. And he doesn't really care about getting rescued. For him, this is really party time. Uh, the last of, I think, the four main characters is Simon. Right. The only boy who uh, shows a bit of prayer. And uh, shows prayer, says prayer. Shows prayer. All right, he's a prayerful person. Uh, shows uh, prayerfulness. That's not a word. Uh, hmm. He prays. We'll go with that. All right, so he's the only character who kind of prays, uh, but he becomes the first character to lose his mind. All right, loses his mind.
Other notes I would make about Simon, he talks to the Lord of the Flies. That's really kind of one of these really strange things. Uh, remember, the Lord of the Flies, which we'll get to in a second, um, is an allusion to the devil. All right, but So Simon kind of loses his mind. He gets eaten, cannibalized, uh, and then completely ripped apart. Uh, the scene where he is ripped apart is so horrific. I'm just going to read a little bit of that scene because it's really just absolutely the worst. Um, and so there's nothing like reveling in terribleness. Uh, in your book, if you're curious, this is found on pages 152 to 156, if you wanted to make notes about that. All right, so 152 to 156 is where Simon's death occurs, 156. What am I talking about? 153. So sorry. So you might want to add a little bit of that. Um, so at the bottom of 152, it says the sticks fell and the mouth of the new circle crunched and screamed. The beast was on its knees in the center, its arms folded over its face. It was crying out against the abominable noise, something about a body on the hill. The beast struggled forward, broke the ring, and fell over the steep edge of the rock to the sand by the water. At once the crowd surged after it. It poured down the rock. It leapt onto the beast. It screamed, struck, bit, tore. There were no words and no movements but the tearing of teeth and claws. All right, so they really just kind of destroy Simon. They rip him apart. It's, I'm assuming, very bloody and disgusting and awful. All right, so there's that. Uh, now I'll go in order of the rest of these characters. Johnny's the first little one we meet. Uh, it's not too important of a character, but it is important that he's the first. He's seen several times throughout the story. Uh, you might want to add uh, little details, such as uh, when we first see him, we see his pink thumb, and remember, pink is associated with innocence. Lord of the Flies, remember that he is, in of himself, an allusion uh, to the devil, Beelzebub, all those things. Uh, it's a pig's head on a stick. All right, all that remains of it at the end of the story is like a skull on a stick. It's kind of weird and creepy. The naval officer, he rescues the boys. That's not complicated. Um, he says uh, he has that awesome example of situational irony, all right, uh, where he comes to the scene, fire burning, children are dead, and he's like, uh, fun and games? <laughs> and uh, Ralph kind of looks at him and is like, I can't believe you just said fun and games. You know, my friends are dead. Uh, and it's awful. Uh, Percival's the first little one to go crazy. His full name is Percival Wemmis Madison. Uh, for some reason, that seems to be something that they repeat over and over again. I would note it. All right, Roger. All right, he kills Piggy. He's kind of a jerk. All right, he's unpleasant. He throws rocks at little ones at one point, um, which totally foreshadows Piggy's death. Um, you know, just like a ton of other things foreshadow Piggy's death, such as the very first scene where uh, Ralph pretends he's a plane and guns down Piggy. It's terrible. Uh, Sam and Eric, the identical twins. They're inseparable. We put their name as one thing because they're basically the same person. Uh, Wilfred was the poor little boy who gets beat for no reason. I'm sure there's some other important characters. These are the main ones. You know, Henry, uh, who's the cousin of the boy, who has the mulberry mark. Uh, there's Bill. Um, you know, there's just a slew of other characters, and we could go on and on, but I think these are the main ones you should know. Some general information, literary terms you should keep in mind. All right, Illusion was an important one. All right, because Lord of the Flies is an allusion uh, to the devil. He's also an illusion. I don't... As far as I can tell, he doesn't really exist. Some people might want to argue otherwise. I think that'd be silly. Um, but feel free to, if you want to. But 
Uh, at least it appears that Simon has lost his mind and he's talking to a pig's head on a stick. So I'm going with an illusion. All right, so both an illusion and an illusion. Uh, symbolism, obviously, because we're talking about an allegory. So like the pink on the island, that's symbolism. Get that. Foreshadowing. It's all over the place. It's everywhere. Um, you know, I gave that example before. Piggy's death. Uh, Piggy's death symbolically happened something like 12 times uh, before it happens. It's foreshadowed throughout the story. So we have that. Uh, situational irony. You expect one thing to occur, occur but the opposite happens. So you expect the guy who comes and he rescues the boys. You expect him to say, are you okay? Is anyone hurt? Instead, he says, fun and games. It's the opposite of what is expected of the situation. Uh, of course, the sublime, I've mentioned that already. Allegory. Um... You know, there's plenty of examples of simile and metaphors, etc. All right, so keep all those in mind, important literary terms. Uh, that Ralph uh, often gets mad with Jack, mostly because Jack's a jerk. I mean, I just don't have a nicer word than that. I wish I did. I wish it could, could be like, uh, Ralph... Uh, feels that he's very upset with Jack often, but I don't see that happening, all right? He's a jerk, um, and that's what I have to say about that. Uh, let's see. You know, the choir boys, I would keep them in mind. They follow. They follow Jack. Uh, the boys chant. That's certainly... Another thing that would certainly appear on a test, right? Uh, the boys chant, which I believe goes, Kill the pig. Cut her throat. I feel like there needs to be more exclamation points. That's right. Cut her throat. Spill her blood. At one point they... Say, do her in. Or bash her in at another point, too. So, yeah. Alright. Oh, other literary term you want to also keep in mind. There we go. Onomatopoeia. Alright, a word that sounds the way it's spelled. Zoom, bash, dog, well, dog, not dog, rough, uh, meow, anything like that. Uh, so we get that. Uh, we do have some examples, all right, especially when we're faced with the sublime, some internal conflict. We see Ralph kind of mulling about. He's kind of depressed and sad and all of that good stuff. All right, so those are just general things, all right, um, just to keep in mind. Uh, the last thing I wanted to go over was, I don't want to go over the impl entire plot diagram. We've done that already. You have the V notes for that. But just some general things, just throwing out some things. If you knew I was going to give you a list of things, all right, and this is going to be on the exam, all right, I'm going to say the kids are rescued, and you're going to write in the space provided resolution, all right? So here we go. All right, things to keep in mind. All right, for the exposition, all right, we meet the boys. Uh, there's a plane crash. Uh, Ralph is voted chief. All, right. all of the stuff leading up to the Great Fire, all right, that becomes the exposition. Uh, once we have uh, the Great Fire, all right, that becomes the inciting incident. So the first part of the inciting incident, usually the inciting incident is like a, a very one type of thing. And in this instance, it is one thing, but it's a little more developed than, than that. So the inciting incident is, all right, the fire gets out of control. The Great Fire.
we know this. All right, there's no mystery to that. All right, but also that the mulberry marked kid he goes missing. Excellent. All right, the complication is everything else that follows um, until the storm uh, and the death of Simon. Uh, so things in the complication are items such as the boat passes. And the fire goes out. Uh, they try to build huts. All right, that kind of stuff. All right, so make sure you look over the complication. There's some general bits of information. The climax, all right, the part that we all live for, all right, is all right the thunderstorm. It's such a big thunderstorm, one might call it a tempest. All right, the thunderstorm, uh, the death of the sow, or so, the death of Simon. All things that occur in the climax. The denouement, all right, uh, we could do with the denial of Simon's death. We may want to add something like uh, Piggy's death. That happens in the day to one. Um, you know, uh, we really get to see um, Castle Rock for the first, first time. I should capitalize Castle Rock. It's a proper name. Castle and should be able to spell correctly. Hoi! I am. All right, Sea Castle Rock. There we go. All right, and finally, the resolution. All right, you know, uh, very basic. Uh, the kids are rescued. We meet the naval officer. Stuff like that. All right, now, I've gone into further depth than this podcast slash YouTube video, whatever we want to call it, uh, goes into. But I did want to give you just general... Uh, things that you want to keep in mind, but there's more than all of this, all right, much, much more. Um, so do look at the plot diagrams that we've made in class. Do look at the V notes. If you're like, oh, I don't remember things that happen in the complication, pull out your chapter four, your chapter five, your chapter six V notes. Look through them, all right? I tell you, this is the exposition. This is the complication. This is the inciting incident. All right, I make it clear. So be clear about it, all right? That's good. Study! That's always the most important thing. I want you to do well. So watch this video a couple more times because in this video, I'm sure I've gone over many, 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 many answers on the test. Uh, I've told you basically what you need to know. All right, use your notes. Use any other resources you have. Come to extra help if you can, if you're listening to this early. If not, say lovey, you'll be fine, all right? So keep reviewing, keep studying, like my videos, that's always nice, I appreciate that. Um, and that's that for the day. So I wish you the best of luck, and thanks for listening.